y'all. Welcome to the hashtag ruthless uh, tarot unboxing video where I, your ruthless co-host, uh, Jesse Blount, uh, do unbox uh, Lark's tarot deck, the Under the Bed Tarot. Uh, I already opened the box that it came in, so you don't get to have the whole like me cutting it open, but I don't think you really are here for that anyway. Uh, so as you can see, first off, it comes in this really cute little like mesh bag with the, if you, especially if you've ordered the, both the deck and the guidebook like I did. Oh. <laughs> so let's just take out the deck and the book. I'm just going to put the book aside for a minute. So here we go. Look at this cute box. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Oh, there's a little card inside that I didn't even see. Oh, I don't even open this card. Oh. Should grab my letter opener, probably. Oh, I know what these are. These are my stickers. Um, look how cute these are. Oh, and there's the Empress, my birth card. Pretty exciting. And I recognize some of these other little dudes, but I don't remember exactly what. I am magic. That's going to go, this is definitely going to go in my altar later on. All right, in there. All right, let's open this box. A little ASMR for you guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's more plastic. Look at this. So cool. All right. Mm, that nice new deck smell. So let me do, check out the back. As you can see, oh, I guess that's my lotion leaving a little bit of finger marks, but nice matte finish. I'm sure that's what you guys are all, all care about. Nice little, so, wow, oh, okay. See, this little guy's the fool. Oh, and the magician. Right. And of course the, oh, sorry, not the, Empress the Nurturer, because if you're just checking this out, um, part of the under the bed tarot is that these are all um, gender free little friends. Uh, so we got some of the suits instead of the usual page, knight, king, queen. We have the explorer. The engager, the embodier, and the enactor. So, and then yeah, and fun little monsters for everyone like myself who does not like a super gender tarot deck, unlike the traditional Rider Waif deck. So. But yeah, it's all in it's all in black and white, and so just getting some some fun some major arcana for those of you who know. And then let's just take a peek at the wand. So every every card has a original little monster on there, not just the major arcana or the suits. So. Yeah. All right. Maybe let's do let's do a little shuffle shuffle. So, what I have prepared for everyone today. Oh, that goes to our focus. Oh yeah, look at that nice. Look at that nice shuffle. Um, I don't do a like dealer shuffle with my decks because I just prefer to be a little bit gentle with them. Um, but what I am gonna do is I have a. 
deck interview tarot spread prepared that I'm going to just go, you know, do a little shuffling and then we're going to just, we're just going to go through the spread and then I'll use the guidebook to help me so that everyone just kind of gets a sense of how, um, you know, what the guidebook is and like, you know, what, just like a little sampler of like, you know, this could be you in your card reading. I, uh, fun fact, I painted my nails especially so I could do this video since I knew that you guys were going to be staring at my hands. <laughs> Uh, just don't look too closely because I am not a nail technician. I'm not a specialist at that. But it does match the deck at least. All right. Cool. Well, let's do this here. Deck interview. We're just going to lay this guy out. All right. And then I'll walk you guys through into the positioning. Let's just separate that one more, one more time. Yeah. Okay. So. So the first card over here is where the deck is going to tell me about itself and what is the most important characteristic of this deck. And so we got, oh, the Nurturer, um, which is also my birth card, which is why I'm a big fan of the Nurturer. So we got a very fuzzy, warm looking um, monster that looks... I mean, honestly, like something that would be in a Sesame Street short, uh, arms open and sort of the, the, wor the swirly, whirly lines that just seem like very much like you want to give the nurturer a hug. And so we'll go to the guidebook, written, of course, also by Lark, but here we go. All right, so we have uh, the nurturer. There isn't an image, so I guess I'll just put this card back front and center while I, re while I read this. <clears throat> the nurturer has a welcoming paternal energy, one that speaks of warm hugs and comfort. They're the kind of person who's a thriving garden or a menagerie of happy critters. They invite you to express the sort of care and tenderness you want, you want to receive. Be gentle and loving, both with others and with yourself. Which, honestly, what a good sign for a new deck. So, I love that. All right, so number two is what are your strengths? What are your, sh the second card is what are your strengths as a deck? And we got the Nine of Pentacles. Um, always good. Pentacles are always a good sign of, you know, physical, physical, physicality of the world. All right, so Nine of Pentacles. And this guidebook is also great because it has also the, it, has, it also not only does the upright, but also the reversed. Um, I don't know if I'll have any reversal since I just shuffled this deck, um, but we'll see. But the Nine of Pentacles is about, mm, mm, oh. the Nine of Pentacles is about having what you need to be truly comfortable, safe, and secure. What that means is, what that means is going to be very different from person to person. So don't let society dictate how you interpret this card. What's important here is that you are being asked to trust the sense of security and let yourself feel the comfort that is available to you. So also a good sign for a new deck. So the strength is being, I mean, not only in offering comfort, but uh, I also want to point out to everyone the, you know, the language here, just because a lot of the times uh, pentacles are sort of about material gain, material abundance, oftentimes money. But if we're really trying to think outside of capitalism, as much as we can envision that, um, ab abundance doesn't necessarily mean doesn't necessarily mean things you can buy or sell. It could mean other people. It could mean home. It could mean you know relationships, connections. So 
pretty great sign for this deck. Anyway, I'll leave those there so you guys can still check that out. All right. And then uh, number three down here is what is your limit as a deck? So, oh, more pentacles, the eight of pentacles. So we got this little monster here. And some very divided lines happening. All right. When the eight of, and, and so I'm still reading from the guidebook, everyone. Um, when the eight of pentacle comes up, you are this monster. Focused, confident, excelling at what you do. They are a master pentacle builder because they put in the time and effort to become so. Your patience is effort and your time is well spent. Keep it up. So you might be being like, how is this a limitation? And how I'm interpreting that is that this deck is going to definitely be maybe more direct uh, with you than other decks. Maybe potentially, at least for me, so this deck is telling me that like a little bit less, a little bit less vague and a little bit more direct, uh, a little bit more r maybe r rooted in kind of, you know, action potentially um and action can be i mean mental it can be emotional it doesn't necessarily mean like you know you have to be physically doing a thing all right so card number four is uh what are you here to teach me and oh we got the world hello uh, i love this just round uh circular monster as you and as you can and just to remind you this little guy also the world will be going up on my on my altar because always a good card so look it's waving in case you didn't see the little detail there the world is the final card of the major arcana and as such it is the completion of the fool's journey. You've done all your work and now you get to look around and feel content. Of course, we all get to experience the world many times in our lives. So this isn't a signal to stop growing. It's a high five from the, from the universe for the growth you've done so far and the level you've and the level you've just completed. Take some time to feel proud of yourself. So, so what I'm getting from this then is that this deck is uh going to be teaching me potentially helping me um level up <laughs> as it were in my life in my tarot reading and my connection to the tarot who knows it'll be fun to find out all right so card five is how can i as the tarot reader uh best learn and co and collaborate with you as the deck all right so that is uh, a reckoning all right another major arcana card um <clears throat> i think of this card as being a sort of mix of justice and the hermit you're at the crossroads and big choices have to be made before you can make them you need to be sure about who you want to be on the other side Make your decisions from the standpoint of the person you want to be, even if it isn't the person you currently are, because this is how you get to be that better version of you. I mean, I am liking, I am liking the energy so far that this deck is giving me. I mean, this is, you know, I, I am interpreting this as this deck being like, you know, I'm here, I'm with you to be when you want to answer some of your big life questions, like perhaps me working through my next career choice or my next life choices. This seems like this will be a really good deck. This deck is inviting me to be like, I'm a good deck to like do readings for like those sort of big things, um, which is great. And also look at the little, this a little nose, this a little nose thing. I love it. I fucking love it. All right. And then the last card in this deck interview is what is the potential outcome of our 
working together. Yeah, I'm just gonna move this magician sticker and let's pull this last card. <gasps> the sun. All right. We've got a really exciting no no swords in sight, which is normally I get a lot of swords in my reading because that is my life. <laughs> <clears throat> The sun is a card of abundance and success. It is a promise of good things and uh, it is a promise of good things emotionally, physically, and energetically. It speaks to confidence, joy, and connection. When it comes up in a reading, there is a good reason to feel excited. And I mean, I'm excited about having this deck in my hand to be able to use it in my own readings, uh, which is a, primarily the readings that I do. And like, I don't know. It just feels very welcoming. Like, look how welcoming this, uh, you know, tentacle sun is. It's great. And I mean, I have their bud, the world here too. So a lot of, I feel, it, I feel like this spread is a very like, you know, inviting, like, to collaborate. Because I mean, look, it's just they're looking, looking right at me, um, in a not judgmental way. So, all right, this has been the Under the Bed Tarot unboxing. I hope that this video has been inspiring to you. Um, and then if you want to purchase this here deck that, and the accompanying excellent guidebook, you can buy that. At the hashtag Ruthless website, or you can buy it at Lark's website at larkmalachi.com. All right, great. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. And uh, check us out at hashtag ruthless.com.